Hey gang, it's JC and this is your Daily Dose for Friday, November 5th, 2010, a cooperative venture with Mind Active in beautiful downtown Brentwood. We have archives at the top of the page. We have eye candy archives at the bottom of the page, along with an old school photo, Dave's weather forecast, and the audio on iTunes anytime. Of course, we're on the big 550 KTRS every weekday morning from 10 in the morning until 1 in the afternoon. Got lots going on. And of course, if you can't listen, we are encouraging everybody to download the app for your smartphone, Tune In Radio. It also has a two hour record function. And you can also listen online at KTRS.com. And also, they have highlights at KTRS.com. So so if you miss one of our segments, one of our interviews, uh, it'll usually be posted within a couple of hours after the show. So check all of that out. I'm watching TV this morning, and here we are, three weeks until Thanksgiving, and Andy Williams is a, it's the most wonderful time of the year, about those freaking Branson Christmases. Three weeks till Thanksgiving. Can you guys just back off a little bit? Daylight Savings Time. This is uh, one of my favorite things that happens every year because those of you who've been listening to my shows for 26 and a half years now know why. It was one of the things that just about drove people out of their minds when I got here in 1984, the first time we did this. Now, this is a bit that I've been doing on the air for 10 years before I even got to St. Louis. And it was back in the days of VCRs where if you wanted to record something, you had a little timer and you would set it much like your DVR today, except it was a little more uh, uh, <laughs> prehistoric, I guess you would say. So the premise was, I'm going out of town for the weekend, and I'm leaving on Friday afternoon, and I want to set the VCR on Daylight Savings Time weekend. I want to set the VCR to record 60 minutes Sunday night at 6 o'clock. So I have to set it on Friday before the time change takes place, so what time should I set it for to record 60 minutes? Now, this drove people out of their freaking minds. Uh, the funniest answer, by the way, which we systematically used to get was, we well, set it for 6 o'clock. It's still going to be 6 o'clock. Like, no, because you're going to like spring ahead, fall back, whatever the case may be. So this went on and on and on. So <laughs> the answer, by the way, in the fall is, that. well, let me explain it to you. At 5 o'clock... If you, had, if you weren't there to update your VCR clock on Sunday when the time change, I'm getting confused already. <laughs> if you weren't there, the answer is this. At 5 o'clock, your VCR would say 6 o'clock because you weren't there to change it. So on Friday afternoon, if you wanted to record 60 minutes at 6 o'clock, but after the daylight saving time, time change in the fall, you would set your VCR for 7 o'clock. And it would be reverse of that in the spring. You'd set it for five. Um, luckily, we have machines now that take care of all that. Although, I will tell you, there's a lot of people still using VCRs. You go into Best Buy or something like that and ask people, and they're still selling VCR tapes, so somebody is still using VCRs. So anyhow, set your clocks back one hour Saturday night. Also, make sure you check the batteries in your Viber, I mean your, uh, your smoke detector. It's having a little fun with you there. Um, Highway 40 is going to be closed again this weekend from Jefferson all the way to 6th. This is a wonderful thing that our city does to promote tourism. Really show the place off on the weekend, especially the downtown area and all the businesses and restaurants and everything like that. You know, it, I understand that Modon has to close down streets to do work. But let me just tell you something. About, it was either two or three weeks ago, I had friends in from South Carolina, okay, and so I'm trying to show them downtown, and I'm trying to get around. You couldn't get around anywhere because everything was closed. And it wasn't just the highway, just trying to maneuver, just trying to get around things were sort of shut down. And here's the thing. I, I went up there and really sort of took a look. There wasn't a goddamn thing going on. So they had Highway 40 shut down from Jefferson all the way almost to the bridge, and there wasn't anybody working. There wasn't anything going on. So I understand that you have to close roads sometimes to do maintenance and things like that, but why are you closing the roads on a weekend too often on the weekend and then not doing anything all day? See, these are things I don't get. And by the way, the last time they did this, a couple of weeks ago, you know, they, they have a deal that basically says you've got to have all this stuff shut down, all the barricades out of the way, and the highway back open by 5.30 on Monday morning, or you get fined. 
And these clowns, last time they had problems with a cement mixer, and so they didn't get the highway back open, and so everybody in rush hour traffic on Monday morning was snarled up down there because the highway was closed. Shit for brains. Shit for brains. Thumbs up their asses at Moda. And by the way, to the TV stations and radio stations in this town that continue to try to make us say Highway 64, it's not Highway 64, it's Highway 40. And I understand that many of you have only been in town about a year or two because the TV stations fired anybody that had any tenure of any kind except for Channel 2, which seems to hold on to its people. Um, it's Highway 40. And just because MoDOT, when they did the renovation of Highway 40, insisted that it be called 64, it doesn't mean we have to say it. Uh, you know, ask yourself this question. When was the last time you were with anybody, anybody, who said, well, we're going to head downtown to the ball game. How are you going to go? Oh, uh, I think I'll take 64. Nobody says it. Nobody says 64. It's Highway 40. Say Highway 40. And do these shit for brains, TV stations and radio stations. Oh, man. I was in a good mood when I started this. U2 tickets go on sale Monday at the usual ticket outlets, July 17th at Bush Stadium. W all over the TV starting next week. They're already starting to run little snippets. Matt Lauer's got a special that's going to air Monday night at 7 o'clock on NBC with W, and then Oprah gets them on Tuesday. A uh, little revisionist history going on with W these days. The new Conan O'Brien show debuts on TBS on Monday night, and on Tuesday... Uh, the Big 550 KTRS at 12.50, we're going to have Bill Carter. Bill Carter has written lots of good books, including the definitive story about the heyday of Monday Night Football, a book called Monday Night Mayhem. Also wrote The Late Shift. That was the story about the war between Leno and Letterman for The Tonight Show. And now he has written a new book called When... Oh, shoot. What did I do with it? I think I have it in my... Here it is. It's called um, The War for Late Night, When Leno Went Early and Television Went Crazy. We've got Bill Carter on for a half an hour, Tuesday afternoon at 12.15 on the Big 550 KTRS. Uh, yeah, and that uh, George W. Bush book, he, uh, he apparently reveals that he scored 120 on his IQ test. That is if you add up all eight of them. For the first time ever, Jon Stewart was bigger than both Leno and Letterman in viewers between the ages of 18 to 49 through October. The Daily Show averaged 1.3 million 18 to 49 year olds, while both The Tonight Show and Letterman had 1.2. It's the first time that's ever happened. It was also the first time in a decade that a late night show other than The Tonight Show or Letterman has been number one in that demographic. It's a great show, and I'm not surprised. And it's on cable. You know, when you get cable shows beating the network shows, something is going on. On a related note, Letterman also beat Leno in all categories last week. It was the first time since Jay stole The Tonight Show back from Conan on that deal. If you are a, fran a fan of Aretha Franklin, you're planning on seeing her somewhere. I don't think she was planning on coming to St. Louis. Uh, it doesn't matter, though, because Aretha has canceled all of her shows through May. Aretha broke a few ribs in a fall back in August. Also, from looking at her, it appears as though Aretha has also eaten a few ribs. If you didn't vote... Prepare to feel real bad, real bad. On Tuesday, an 83-year-old man in Pennsylvania was on the way home from being hospitalized for two weeks, but first he made his ambulance driver pull over so he could vote from his stretcher. And also, I think we told you yesterday that even the astronauts in the space shuttle voted. We made Joe Marlotti feel real bad because he was on a plane and didn't get a chance to vote. Here's another sign of Facebook's all-reaching power. It can now predict elections. 74% of the House of Representatives races were won by the candidate with more Facebook fans. So were 81% of the Senate races. Americans waste a ton of food. A report says that between 25% and 50% of all food in this country gets wasted. 93% of people say they buy food they never eat, and the average family spends $2,200 a year on wasted food. And here's how to botch a robbery. Two robbers in Washington got into a shootout with the homeowner, and one robber accidentally shot and killed the other robber. The shooter ran away empty-handed. He is still on the run. 
And in preparation for President Obama's visit to Mumbai, India, they're removing the coconuts from all the trees in the city so one of them doesn't hit them on the head. I can't write stuff like this. I can't make stuff like this up. Unbelievable. All right, uh, JC's Video Village, we're back to 1993 for the review I did of the movie Alive, where they had to eat each other to stay alive after their plane crashed in the Andes. The Wayback Machine goes back to the late 1980s where Martin Dugan, and there's some sort of love fest now because he's like 107 years old and he's fallen apart and he retired from Donnybrook and everybody's kissing his ass. Well, you know, I sort of know a different Donnybrook uh, host, Martin Dugan, because he uh, he... I was involved in a lawsuit from which I was completely exonerated after two years of legal proceedings, but then I was convicted by Martin Dugan on Donnybrook. Even though the court and the judge said I was not guilty, Martin Dugan decided that I was and took my head off. It's like, he went on for like five or six minutes about this thing. It's just unbelievable. Um, our old school photo has been updated. We're back to 1983 in Buffalo, New York. What was Father Mulcahy from MASH doing in Buffalo? What the hell was I doing in Buffalo? And JC's eye candy today is a riot, I'm telling you. It's this little girl appears to be, I'd say, maybe 11 or 12 years old. And she's trying to sing Whitney Houston's song, I Will Always Love You. And it's got those real, real high-pitched parts. Well, she's not a good enough singer to hit those notes. And she gets increasingly frustrated. And she starts swearing and screaming and just totally flipping out. It is hilarious. And you have to ask your question, she was obviously very embarrassed by this, so how did it end up on YouTube? And I'm just guessing there's an evil little brother involved somewhere. So that's it. That's your Daily Dose for Friday, November 5th, 2010, a cooperative venture with Mind Active in beautiful downtown Brentwood. Have a great weekend, everybody. We'll talk to you on Monday. In the meantime, we've beaten this one to death. Have a good one. See you later. Bye.